Hello, my friends. Oh yes, it's time that we continue this card set journey that I chose to embark on. In theory, I just set myself up for like, I don't know, a few dozen videos. There are a lot of Pokemon card sets now. But I said I only wanted to cover the Wizards of the Coast era, and that is what I intend to do right now. And what better way to do this than to cover the second set released for the second episode. I make it make sense. And also, like, be sure to check out my base set episode first if you have the time. It's over an hour of me going on and on about some cards. You'll have a great time. And I pretty much want to continue the same structure here. I will go card by card, ranking them by their type and rarity, finding what I think is the best type based on HP averages, weaknesses, etc. Trainer cards, theme decks, favorite cards, most valuable, all that good stuff. And keep in mind that I am not a self-proclaimed expert here. I have little knowledge of what cards were used in tournaments, ideal strategies, or any of that. I literally collected the cards when I was 13 and played them then and then haven't really played them until I started doing challenges for this channel. So these will be based on my limited experiences and opinions. I stated this in the last video and I still had a lot of people saying I got things completely wrong. But if you've watched my channel at all, I have never focused on building the best decks to win the fastest. I'm just here to have fun and think of stupid challenge ideas. And most importantly, I just like talking about these, hence the video series. So keep that in mind as we go over the entirety of the jungle set. Also, an enormous thank you to my partners over at Into the AM. Head on over there to get 10% off of your order by using the code PARASPECTOR and get yourself some truly awesome shirts. You know where the link is, so check it out if you really want to help support the channel in a big way. The Fractal Beast shirt is perfect for this jungle theme. So this right here is about the second expansion, the Jungle Set, which is actually my favorite set, fun fact. The nostalgia for me is the absolute strongest for the base and Jungle Sets, even more than Fossil. There was just something about those blue and green packs that triggered some sort of excitement meter or dopamine surge or whatever. I was 13, things were weird then. But as far as this episode goes, we have much, much less to cover here than with the base set. The base set consisted of 102 cards, and the Japanese release of the Jungle set only had 48. They decided to pull a fast one for the English release with 64 cards, but I'll go over that. The Jungle set in Japan was released on March 5th, 1997, with the English release being on June 16th, 1999, roughly half a year after base set and only about two weeks before Pokemon Pinball came out. Everything pretty much remains the same here. The same seven types, same rules, and all that good stuff. But based on the name alone, this set does absolutely have more of a focus on the grass type. There are 18 grass Pokemon in the jungle set compared to the one single psychic type there. Yeah, the type balance here is certainly not the focus like it was with the base set, but that's not really the point. That set absolutely should have had good type balance as it did kick off the first release of the game. This set is called Jungle, therefore it has a focus on grass as its gimmick. As the blurb states, Are you ready to explore the jungle? If you look hard, you'll find 48 new Pokemon cards in the exciting jungle expansion for the Pokemon trading card game. Trade with your friends, show off your favorites, and build decks from the random cards in this booster pack to customize a Pokemon theme deck or starter set. Collect all the jungle cards and you'll discover awesome new holographic cards with super attacks. A must for every Pokemon collector. Do you have the skills to become the world's number one Pokemon master? Master the Pokemon trading card game and find out! Honestly, I feel like that doesn't really emphasize the set enough. It doesn't really say much of anything. I figured there'd be at least some made up lore about how there's an influx of grass types running amok or something. Either way, this is what we get. There are 45 Pokemon debuts here, bringing the original 151 total up to 114, and then they chose to already make two new variants of returning Pokemon from the base set, Pikachu and Electrode. In total, there are 14 colorless Pokemon, 6 fighting, 2 fire, 18 grass, 3 lightning, 1 psychic, and 3 water types in the jungle set. And one single trainer card. That's it. Also, this set does complete five evolution lines that originated in the base set, so things are beginning to come together. The Japanese booster packs had a variety of Pokemon in the cover art of Mankey, Paris, Executor, Kangaskhan, Butterfree, Oddish, Rhydon, and Bellsprout, while the English releases kept the trend of one featured Pokemon on three different packs, just like with Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise. 
This time we get Wigglytuff, Scyther, and Flareon. I especially find it interesting that they went with Flareon to be a poster child here in a grass focus set. The first edition cards return here, except there are no longer early release shadowless versions like with the base set. And as I said earlier, there are 48 cards in the Japanese jungle set, but 64 in the English set. What gives? Well, the extra 16 cards aren't anything new, but instead non-holo cards of each of the rares that are holographic. Is that kinda lame? I don't know, yes and no. I kinda like that when you open a jungle pack, you weren't necessarily guaranteed to get that holo rare like in the base set. It makes getting that holo Flareon even more special and exciting. But at the same time, the holo and non-holo versions have different numbers in the set too. So if you want to get a complete set of jungle cards, you will need both the holo and non-holo of every single rare. Flareon is both number 3 and number 19 in the set and is the exact same card. It is a little monotonous, but as I said, it puts more value on the hollows rather than them being just like all the others. So without further ado, let's go card by card, type by type, rarity by rarity, and rank them based on my own personal thoughts. And uh, sometimes there won't be anything to compare them to, so most of the rankings will be for grass and colorless here. Starting off with the colorless type, there are four commons here, Spiro, Jigglypuff, Meowth, and Eevee. This is a tough one, but I think I'm going to go with Eevee as the best here. They all have at least 50 HP, which is sweet, and then Eevee has that standard psychic resistance that the normies have, and then two moves. Tail Wag for one, any energy can cause Eevee to avoid damage with a coin flip, giving you the chance to add a second energy to use Quick Attack, which will either deal 10 or 30 damage depending on the flip. With a double colorless energy, Eevee could be dishing out 30 damage on the first turn. That's pretty nice. In second, I'm going with Spiro, and it's mostly because of its free retreat cost. 50 HP, a resistance to fighting, and a free retreat cost isn't bad at all. Actually very similar to Doduo from the base set, but I think Spiro is better. Peck is super basic, dealing 10 for one of any energy, but there's also the option of Mirror Move for 3 colorless. Mirror Move works the same as it did with Pidgeotto, doing the same damage back to the opponent that was done to Spiro. Most of the time it won't be any more than 40 damage based on Spiro's 50 HP, but it's still a nice option and worth putting energies on if you're waiting to get Firo. Next I just barely have to go with Meowth. 50 HP, weakness to fighting, resistance to psychic, 1 retreat cost, nothing new there. But its only move is Payday, which could be pretty useful. 2 colorless to only deal 10 damage, but you get to draw a card with a heads flip. Unless you're at risk of running out of your deck, drawing cards is almost always a plus, so Meowth is good for obtaining cards faster. However, you may not draw any at all with some bad coin flip luck. And then in last is Jigglypuff, but it does have its perks. It has the most HP of the 4 with 60, making it pretty similar to Growlithe or Seal. It has the same weakness, resistance, and retreat cost as Eevee and Meowth, but two move options. Lullaby is an auto sleep move for a single any energy, and while I never love sleep moves, it's nice to use to be able to use Pound on the next turn. Nothing flashy there, just 20 damage for 2 colorless. The difference between Eevee and Jigglypuff here is very small, so I think they did well here making these pretty balanced. Then we have 5 uncommon options. Firo, Persian, Dodrio, Lickitung, and Tauros. Actually some really good ones here too. I feel compelled to go with Dodrio as the best here though. 70 HP, weakness to lightning, resist fighting, free retreat cost. So even evolving Doduo into Dodrio doesn't add any retreat cost, that's cool. And then on top of that, Dodrio actually focuses on lessening other retreat costs with its Pokemon power. Retreat Aid has any of your active Pokemon cost one less to retreat if Dodrio is on your bench. That could be incredibly useful. So many Pokemon have a 1 retreat cost and now that goes to 0 which can be scary. And then it has 1 attack with Rage for 3 colorless which does 10 damage and then 10 more for each damage counter on Dodrio. Up to 70 damage from 3 of any energy. Yeah, Dodrio is pretty sweet and is a nice completion to the previous lone base set Doduo. Next is a really tough call, but I'm gonna pick Persian. 70 HP, weakness to fighting, resist psychic, and also a free retreat cost. If you were already using Meowth, those two energies on it turns from Payday to Scratch, now dealing 20 basic damage. But for 3 colorless, I like Pounce a lot. 30 damage and then attacks done to Persian by that Pokemon on the next turn are reduced by 10. A nice little defensive bonus that also dishes out 30, which is sweet. And then each of the next three are all good in different ways. 
I personally like Tauros next, who has the least HP of the five, but is definitely more offensive based. Weak to fighting, resists psychic in a two retreat cost, which isn't great. But with two energies, Stomp is kind of like the reverse of quick attack. 20 set damage and then 10 more with a heads flip rather than 10 boosting it to 30. And then if Tauros starts to take damage, Rampage for 3 energies does a set 20, plus 10 more for each damage counter on Tauros with the downside of Tauros being confused with a Tails flip. But Tauros is also a basic Pokemon so it can be dealing out some nice damage pretty quick. Like with Eevee, it could hit for 30 on the first turn if you have a double colorless on it. Then in 4th, I gotta go with Firo. Just like with Dodrio in Persian, it has 70 HP and a free retreat cost, and is only a second stage evolution. I only put Firo lower because its moves are a bit costlier, but still quite good. For 3 energies, agility does 20 and prevents damage with a heads flip, giving you the chance to get to 4 energies in order to use Drill Peck, dishing out a simple 40. Yeah, Firo may be lower on my list, but it's still really good. And then in last we have a beastly defensive Pokemon, sort of acting as this set's Onyx. Lickitung has a ton of HP with 90 and is a basic Pokemon, so it's the perfect stalling one of the five. But I think it's so much better than Onyx. It has a high retreat cost of 3, but Lickitung is meant to stay in and stall for you. For a single energy, Tongue Wrap does 10 and paralyzes with a heads flip. And for a second option, Supersonic causes confusion with a heads flip for 2 energies. Yeah, I have Licky Tongue last, but I could even see it being the best here under the right circumstances. They did a nice job with the colorless ones in this set, I gotta say. I only put Licky Tongue last because I'm less enthused about stalling Pokemon than I think a lot of people are. I got called out a lot in the base set video for not giving enough credit to Chansey, because Chansey is meant to be there and take hits and prevent damage. And yes, stalling is certainly a strategy to win, but it's just less fun. If you're using Licky Tongue, you're pretty much keeping it in there to get more cards over time until it gets knocked out, or you use a switch or something. There's certainly merit to that, but I just prefer the quicker, zoomier ones like Dodrio and Persian to the wall-like Licky Tongue. With that said, Tongue Wrap may be paralyzing could make Licky Tongue very scary, and could end up being defensive and taking down Pokemon over time. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, all five of these are good cards. And then we have five rares here even. Pidgeot, Clefable, Wigglytuff, Kangaskhan, and Snorlax. This is a funny one for me, as if you've seen any of my challenge videos, I love when the computer players use Kangaskhan. More often than not, it means I'm going to win. But the thing with that is that it isn't because Kangaskhan is bad, far from it. It's just how the game is programmed. But I do think four of the five rares here are pretty awesome, and one is pretty good. And if used correctly, I do think Kangaskhan is the best here. 90 HP, the same normal type weakness and resistance, but a 3 retreat cost. But what makes it so good are its moves, combined with its high HP and being a basic mon. Fetch lets you instantly draw a card for a single energy, and this is why I usually end up winning. The AI uses Fetch over and over, and if Kangaskhan is injured, they tend to not add energies to attack or retreat Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is both a stalling card, but more importantly, a way to draw cards quick and easy. And on top of that, Comet Punch for 4 energies really isn't half bad. 20 damage for each heads on 4 flips. It's defensive, offensive, and a deck booster all in one. In second, I personally think Pidgeot is very underrated and finally completes the evolution line from the base set. 80 HP, weakness to lightning, resist fighting, no retreat cost. And its moves are pretty sweet. Wing attack is very basic, 20 damage for 2 energies. But Hurricane is where it's at. For 3 energies, it deals 30, but only if it knocks out the defending Pokemon. If it doesn't, your opponent returns it and all cards attached to it back into their hand. Yeah, that's awesome. If they spend a ton of time powering up a Venusaur or something, they gotta start all over. And if you don't want them to return everything, then just use Wing Attack until it knocks them out. And then it can retreat for free on top of that. I like Pidgeot a lot, but it doesn't tend to stand out much in this set. Next, I gotta go with Clefable, also completing that base set evolution here. And it's simply because of its pretty high HP of 70, and has Metronome for a single energy. Yeah, I mentioned last time that Clefairy wasn't that great with how Metronome was pretty costly and it only had 40 HP, but yikes. This time the HP is almost doubled and Metronome costs a single colorless energy. Clefable could be using Charizard's Fire Spin for one energy and no discarding. That's so cool. And then it also has the option of Minimize for 2 colorless, reducing all damage done to Clefable by 20. 
Clefable could cause your opponent to completely rethink their strategy here. In fourth, I have Snorlax, and just because it's fourth doesn't mean it isn't awesome. A basic Pokemon with 90 HP has the Pokemon power of Thick Skinned, which means it cannot get a status condition, and then its attack, while hefty, is pretty good. Body Slam for 4 energies does 30 and can paralyze with a heads flip. However, it does have the single highest retreat cost thus far with 4. Snorlax is meant to be in for the long haul, but pretty awesome that it can't get a status condition, but can still cause paralysis itself. And then in 5th is of course, Wigglytuff, one that I'm very familiar with from my Easter challenge. Wigglytuff certainly isn't bad, but doesn't stand up to the rest in my opinion. It's much better suited for the late game. It has 80 HP, a 2 retreat cost, and the usual normal type weakness resistance. Then it has 2 moves. Lullaby is exactly the same as Jigglypuff, so that's no different. Auto sleep for 1 energy. But do the wave is pretty cool, but situational. For 3 energies, it does 10, and then 10 more for each of your benched Pokemon. Wigglytuff needs a Pokemon heavy deck to excel, or else it's just causing sleep or dealing 10 damage for 3 energies. But of course, it can also deal up to 60, so it's no slouch or anything. I just like it the least of these 5. On to the fighting type, and we have 3 commons. Mankey, Cubone, and Rhyhorn. For me personally, an easy ranking. Rhyhorn is a pretty nice starting common here. 70 HP, weakness to grass, resists lightning, but has a 3 retreat cost. Its moves are Leer, which prevents damage done to Rhyhorn with a heads flip for a single colorless, which is a really nice move to use to power it up to use Horn Attack, a 30 damage you move for 1 fighting and 2 colorless. I like Rhyhorn a lot here, and a lot of that has to do with its resistance, HP, and Leer, all factors that help keep Rhyhorn in long enough to use Horn Attack or evolve into Rhydon. In second is Cubone, who is weirdly similar to Rhyhorn, but just less with everything. It only has 40 HP, the same grass weakness and lightning resistance, but only a 1 retreat cost. But I do like its moves. Snivel is somewhat similar to Leer in that it reduces damage done to Cubone by 20 for a single colorless. Then for 2 fighting, Rage does 10 and 10 more for each damage counter on Cubone. So it helps to give you the option of using Snivel to stall or take minimal damage, and then Rage can deal some last minute damage if Cubone survives long enough. It's really not a bad first draw card at all. And last is definitely Mankey, the lowest HP of 30, a psychic weakness, and a free retreat cost. Its only attack is Scratch, simply dealing 10 damage for one colorless. But what makes it kind of fun is its Pokemon power. Peak allows you to once per turn look at either the top card of either deck, any one of the prizes, or a random card from your opponent's hand. It's not game changing by any means, but it could still come in handy under the right circumstances. Maybe you need a certain card that you know is a prize, or you want to know if your next card is good or not to decide if you should use a trainer to draw a card or get your deck shuffled or something. But yeah, other than that, Mankey doesn't have much else going for it. It can retreat for free though, so there's that. Then there are three uncommons, the evolved forms of the three commons. Primeape, Marowak, and Rhydon. Personally, I think I like Marowak the most here. It has the lowest HP of the three with only 60, and then has a Grass Weakness, Lightning Resistance, and a 1 Retreat cost. But I really do like its moves. If you were already using Rage with Cubone, Bone Meringue has the same cost. For 2 fighting, it'll do 0, 30, or 60 depending on the coin flips. Coin flip luck is pretty unreliable, but the chances are good that you'll at least be dealing 30 damage. And then for 2 fighting and 1 colorless, Call for Friend has you search your deck for any basic fighting type Pokemon to go on your bench. That can be really awesome in a pure fighting deck, or even if you're using some strong ones and need to find them. I like the Pokemon that can have offensive, defensive, and utility aspects to them, just like with Kangaskhan. Second and third are tough, but I feel like Primeape is just slightly the better of the two. 70 HP, weakness to Psychic, and only a 1 retreat cost. But its moves can be good or bad. For 2 fighting, Fury Swipes has you flip 3 coins, dealing 20 for each heads. So 0, 20, 40, or 60. The chances are better at not dealing 0 here as opposed to Marowak's Bone Meringue, but also worse at dealing 60. The safer bet here. And then it has Tantrum for 2 fighting and 1 colorless, which does 50, and then Primate becomes confused with a Tails Flip. I don't love self status condition causing moves, but you can still stick to Fury Swipes until it's looking like Primate won't last much longer, and then Tantrum is a pretty easy 50 for only 1 more energy. I like it, I don't love it. 
but just as good for completely different reasons is Rhydon in third. It easily has the most HP of the three with 100, so that's really awesome. And it has the grass weakness, lightning resistance, and a big retreat cost of three. Horn attack is exactly the same as Rhyhorn. 30 damage for the same cost of one fighting and two colorless, so no different there. Then it's just trading Rhyhorn's move of Leer for Rhydon's Ram, which takes a whopping four fighting to use and does 50 damage. Rhydon takes 20 damage, and then the defending Pokemon switches out for a benched one of your opponent's choosing. I put Rhydon last because Ram is just so costly for a move that also self-damages Rhydon. It is cool that the defending Pokemon goes away though, so you can kinda plan on if Horn Attack or Ram is the better option. Rhydon is still a pretty big powerhouse though, I just prefer Marowak or Primeape. And that's it for the fighting type, there are no fighting type rares to be found here. As for the jungle fire types, there are only two in the entire set. One uncommon and one rare. Yeah, this set is really not fire focused, even though Flareon gets to be on the booster pack cover. Therefore, I'll just quickly describe the two cards as there's nothing to compare them to. The uncommon here is Rapidash, completing the evolution line from the base set Ponyta. It has 70 HP, a weakness to water, and a free retreat cost. I've noticed that's the case with a lot of these in the set. For two colorless, Stomp does 20 with a tails flip, 30 with a heads flip. For two fire and one colorless, Agility does 30, and then all damage done to Rapidash on the next turn is prevented with a heads flip. So the nice thing about Rapidash here is that Ponyta already needed two energies to even attack. So assuming that's the case, you can already at least use Stomp, and you don't necessarily need any fire energies. And Agility is always a nice bonus move to help prevent damage. Rapidash isn't half bad at all, and can even retreat for free too. And the single fire rare here is, of course, Flareon. It has 70 HP, a weakness to water, and a 1 retreat cost. It has quick attack, which is exactly the same as Eevee's. 2 colorless to deal 30 with a heads flip, 10 with a tails flip. Then for 2 fire and 2 colorless, Flamethrower does 60, and then you discard a fire energy. Not really a whole lot to it here. Flamethrower is costly, and you'll keep needing fire energies to continue using it, but it does still deal 60 damage, and then Quick Attack is the secondary option if you can't use it. But that takes us to the cream of the crop of the set here. The grass type at a mighty 18 Pokemon to go over, and it's a nice symmetrical layout of 6 commons, 6 uncommons, and 6 rares. I like it. The 6 commons here are Nidoran Female, Oddish, Paris, Venonat, Bellsprout, and Execute. I feel like the best one here is probably Nidoran Female. It has the most HP with 60, a weakness to Psychic, and a 1 Retreat cost. Actually, all 6 have a 1 Retreat cost, so that's all a wash. And they all have a weakness to Fire, except for Nidoran, so those won't even be worth mentioning. But Fury Swipes is actually pretty sweet, even for a coin flip move. It does 10 damage for each heads on 3 flips, for a single grass. That's pretty impressive. And it also has the bonus move of Call for Family, which allows you to search your deck for either Nidoran to put on your bench. Yeah, they made the female version pretty good, actually. In second, I have Execute. 50 HP with two moves and of two different types. Hypnosis is an auto-sleep for one Psychic, and then it has Leech Seed for two Grass, dealing 20 and healing Execute for one damage counter. Like with Wigglytuff, I use these in my Easter challenge, and I think Execute can really hold its own for an unevolved basic Grass type. Also, it's cool that it can use two different energies, the first time this has happened in the game. In third, I have Oddish. 50 HP with two moves, one being a potentially paralysis-causing stun spore, dealing 10 for one grass. Then it has its own Call for Family style move here with Sprout for two grass, allowing you to put another Oddish from your deck onto your bench. Not too flashy, but I like that it has decent HP, can paralyze, and add to your bench. In fourth, I went with Venonat. These last three all have 40 HP, so it's more about comparing the moves here. Like with Oddish, it has the same Stun Spore move for one grass, and then it also has Leech Life for one grass and one colorless, dealing 10 and healing Venonat for the same damage dealt. Paralysis and healing for pretty cheap, I like it. In fifth is Bellsprout, and this is a cool one in that it's one of those either or move Pokemon. For one grass, you can use either Vine Whip, dealing a simple 10, or Call for Family, bringing more Bellsprout onto your bench. It's cheaper to get more Bellsprout as opposed to Nidoran or Oddish, but it's balanced out more with Vine Whip being weaker. And then in last, uh, it has to be Paris. For two colorless, Scratch does 20, and for two grass, Spore causes auto-sleep. 
Yeah, I'm no stranger to using Paris, but in my Paris Parasect only challenge on TCG2, I pretty much opted out of this jungle one for the vending one, as it's much better. This one is pretty meh, to be honest. Two energies are needed to attack, and it won't last too long with the 40 HP. So unfortunately, my baby shroom boy comes in last. As far as the uncommons, we have these six. Butterfree, Nidorina, Gloom, Parasect, Weepin' Bell, and Executor. Now, I'm going to do my best here to judge these in a completely unbiased way. And just to save some time, they all have a fire weakness except for Nidorina's psychic weakness. Same as the commons. The best here is easily Executor, though. This card can be ridiculously overpowered. It not only has the most HP of the six with 80, but it has two moves. Teleport for one Psychic allows you to retreat Executor without paying its 3 retreat cost. A nice bonus there. But my god, Big Explosion is where it's at. It does 20 damage for each heads equal to the amount of any energies on Executor. Any energy. And as many as you can fit on it too. Yeah, it's possible you could be dishing out like 120 damage here just by slapping some energies down. I would argue that Executor is the single best card in the jungle set way too cheap. Next is kind of a tough call though. All of these are only next stage evolution cards except for Butterfree who is a third stage, but they made Butterfree pretty good. I'm actually going to pick Gloom in second though which may be surprising. It has 60 HP in two moves, and this may be my poison bias talking, but auto poisoning for only one grass with poison powder is really pretty awesome. Then for 2 grass, Foul Odor does 20 and causes both Pokemon to be confused. I certainly don't love that part, but it's more of an additional option if poisoning them isn't enough. One perk here though is that if Gloom is confused, you can still potentially get rid of it just from evolving it into Vileplume. In third, I will go with Butterfree. Butterfree has the bonus of a fighting resistance and a free retreat cost, which is definitely awesome. It also has 70 HP, which is decent in 2 moves. Whirlwind works like it usually does. 20 damage for 2 colorless, and then your opponent chooses a different bench Pokemon to bring in after. But Mega Drain is awesome, however very costly by needing 4 grass in order to use it. It does 40 and heals Butterfree for the same damage dealt, so being able to blow away the defending Pokemon, resisting fighting, retreating for free, and dishing out some good damage while healing, Butterfree is pretty awesome if you can power it up enough. In 4th I have Nidorina. 70 HP with two pretty fun moves. For only one grass, Supersonic causes confusion with a heads flip, a cheap option to bring on the status conditions. Then its main move is Double Kick, doing 30 for each heads on two flips for one grass and two colorless. Nidorina is pretty good, but not great. Both of its moves rely solely on coin flips for anything to happen, but if luck is with you, you'll ideally be causing confusion and dealing 60 damage. Ugh, and this absolutely pains me, but yeah, I'm going to go with Weepin' Bell in 5th, putting my Shroom Boy in last. In comparing the two, I just think Weepin' Bell is slightly better. It has more HP with 70 and may cause poisoning with Poison Powder for 1 grass. It's not an auto poison like Gloom has, but Razor Leaf is safer and more straightforward than Foul Odor is. It just does 30 for 2 grass. And then in last is Parasect. It's just simply not as good as the other uncommons, but it does still have its bonuses. Spore for 2 grass is exactly the same as Paris, so no change there. Slash does a simple 30, however with 3 colorless. So to attack with either Paris or Parasect, you technically don't even need any grass energies. If you don't care about Spore, they can really go into any deck, which is a plus. But I'm sorry to say they just aren't that good to have that be all that much of a bonus. And just like with my TCG2 challenge, I much preferred Vending Parasect to the jungle one. Vending Parasect is legit really good, so my Shroomy gets its just desserts soon. And finally we have our 6 rares. Nidoqueen, Vileplume, Venomoth, Victory Bell, Scyther, and Pinsir. We got some good ones here, but I feel like I gotta go with the third wheel in the Haymaker deck here. I put Electabuzz and Hitmonchan as the best in their categories in the base set video, and then that leaves Scyther here. And it's used in that deck for good reason. 70 HP, resists fighting, and has a free retreat cost, all for a basic mon. And on top of that, it has two moves. Sword Stance for one grass allows its second attack, Slash, to deal 60 instead of 30. And Slash takes three colorless. Scyther excels at offense and defense here, and I think it is one of the top cards in the set. And then, in what may be a surprise move, I have Venomoth at number two. 
Just like with Scyther, it has 70 HP, resists fighting, and can retreat for free. And it only needs Venonat to evolve, as opposed to three of the others being third stages. But I just really like its move and Pokémon power here. Shift allows you to make Venomoth any type of another Pokémon in play except for Colorless, so you can increase your odds that Venom Powder will deal 20 instead of 10, unless Venomoth has a status condition. And Venom Powder is pretty awesome too. For 2 Grass, it does 10 and then causes both Confusion and Poison with a Heads Flip. That's pretty scary stuff and it's a pretty low cost too. 2 Grass is all you need for that entire evolution line. I kinda love Venomoth here. In third, I like Vileplume. 80 HP and it also has one move with a Pokemon power. Heal allows you to heal any of your own Pokemon once per turn with a Heads Flip, unless Vileplume has a status condition. A really nice bonus, especially if you have one on your bench, possibly healing your team every turn. For 3 Grass, Petal Dance is scary for both players. It does a mighty 40 damage for each heads on 3 flips, and then auto-confuses Vileplume. So anywhere from 0, 40, 80, or 120 damage. What does suck about Vileplume though is that its auto-confusion negates its heal power, so you really want to have some full heals around with this card. And its 2 retreat cost is meh, not great. Vileplume works best on your bench to assist, but if you have to use it, it could potentially be one-shotting any Pokémon that exists thus far. Also, Vileplume is the logo of the jungle set. This is the prototypical jungle card. In fourth, I have Victory Bell. 80 HP with a 2 retreat cost, and its moves really aren't flashy, but it could be really good if used right. Lure is a permanent gust of wind, just like with base Ninetales, so I love that. For one grass, you decide which of your opponent's Pokémon is active. Then for two grass, Acid does 20, and then they can't retreat with a heads flip, making Lure even more effective. Victory Bell is great for trapping one of your choice to slowly knock it out. And what's also really cool about this entire line is the need for only two grass energies. Bellsprout only needs one, and Weeping Bell and Victory Bell only need two. A low cost underrated line here, just none of them are very strong. The final two are actually extremely similar, but I'm going to give the edge to Pinsir here, for one very important reason. It's a basic mon as opposed to a final stage one. Also, Pinsir only needs one energy to retreat as opposed to Nidoqueen needing three. But I think Nidoqueen is only better with HP as 90 is a bit better than Pinsir's 60. But I just like Pinsir's move of Iron Grip more than Nidoqueen's boyfriends. Iron Grip does 20 for two grass and can paralyze. Boyfriends does 20 for one grass and one colorless, but 20 more for each Nidoking you have in play. Boyfriends has the potential to deal 100 damage, but come on. How often are you going to have more than one Nidoking in play, let alone all four? I think the odds of having both Nidoqueen and Nidoking in play won't be all that often unless your deck really centers around this happening. I'll take Iron Grip maybe paralyzing over this rare occurrence. And then both of their second moves are exactly the same. Guillotine and Mega Punch both do 50 damage for 2 Grass and 2 Colorless. Both are quite costly, but 50 damage isn't bad at all if you can make it happen. And yeah, how silly is that to have what is normally a one-hit KO move of Guillotine be the same move as Mega Punch? Okay, Pokemon trading card game. But yeah, Nidoqueen is obviously last for me. It can be pretty beastly, but also kind of a letdown. Whew, grass was a lot to go over, but now it's time to take it easy with the final three types as we're actually almost done. There are only three Lightning, one Psychic, and three Water. There's only one lone Lightning common here, and it's a variant on the base set Pikachu. Jungle Pikachu has 50 HP, a weakness to fighting, and a 1 retreat cost. Its only move is Spark, which does 20 for 2 Lightning, and then it does 10 to one of your opponent's bench Pokémon of your choosing. Um, that's pretty awesome, actually. Since I have nothing to compare this to here, I'll compare it to the base set Pikachu. Yeah, Jungle Pikachu is better. More HP, a cooler attack, and it doesn't have the potential for self-damage like with Thunder Jolt. The only downside here is that Spark does take two Lightning to use, so this Pikachu absolutely needs two turns to even use it, whereas base Pikachu can be ready right away. But come on, Spark is pretty awesome. I like Jungle Pikachu way more. There are no Lightning Uncommons, but we have two Lightning Rares here. Weird that there were no Lightning Uncommons in the base set either. Hmm. But here we have Electrode and Jolteon. It's somewhat of a tough call here. Both are second stages in their lines. Both have a weakness to fighting and a 1 retreat cost. But I gotta give the edge to Jolteon. It has 70 HP, but two more reliable attacks. Quick Attack is the same as Eevee and Flareon that I already talked about. 30 damage with a heads flip, 10 with a tail flip for 2 colorless. But Pin Missile is pretty nice. 
For two lightning and one colorless, it does 20 for each heads on four flips. Yikes. So now you have the option of 0, 20, 40, 60, or 80 damage for only three energies. A really good chance that some damage will happen. It's the same as Kangaskhan's Comet Punch, but more specific with the two lighting energies, yet cheaper. Electrode has more HP with 90 and two moves. Tackle does a simple 20 for two colorless, and then Chain Lightning can be really awesome, useless, or costly. 20 damage for three lightning, and then 10 to every benched Pokemon if they share the same type as the active defending one, unless it's colorless, even your own. The downside is obviously that this could not be great if they have a multi-type deck or are using colorless or most of your own bench Pokemon share the same type, in which case Electrode is a 90 HP tackler. But you know me, I love damaging benches, so Chain Lightning could prove to be a fun time. Then we have our Lone Wolf Psychic type in the set, the rare Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime has only 40 HP, a weakness to Psychic and a 1 Retreat cost. But yeah, its claim to fame is easily its Pokemon power. Invisible Wall has Mr. Mime only being able to be hit by moves that cause 10 or 20 damage. If the move is 30 or stronger, it will fail. Yeah, that's crazy good and makes the 40 HP much more bearable. And if you watched my original Parasect Challenge video, I made the fatal flaw of forgetting to mention that Mr. Mime's Invisible Wall stops working if it has a status condition. I was told I neglected to mention this numerous times and it kinda became an inside joke for me. I was obviously using Parasect, who can use Spore to put it to sleep, and didn't once attempt this. I want to say it's not because I didn't realize this, but yeah, I simply didn't realize this at the time. Hey, it was my first time playing the game in like 20 years, give me a break. Also, it may not have worked anyway because sleep has you flip a coin every turn to wake up. Okay, enough of that rant. I just wanted to bring that up again. And then Mr. Mime's only move here is Meditate, which does 10 damage and 10 more for each damage counter on the defending Pokemon. The same as Jinx. Not great at first, but quickly can become a knockout move. Yet Mr. Mime can be really good and has the potential to completely stop the gameplay. Which brings us to our last three jungle Pokemon here. The three water types, and there's only one of each rarity, so I have nothing to compare here either. The common here is Goldeen. 40 HP, weakness to lightning, no retreat cost, and only one move. Horn attack does 10 for one water. Extremely basic, nothing to it. It retreats for free, which is the main thing it has going for it. The uncommon here is its evolved form of Seeking. Seeking is just Goldeen 2.0. Almost double the HP was 70, a 1 retreat cost instead of 0, the exact same horn attack, but now Seeking has Waterfall, which does 30 for 1 water and 1 colorless. A really cheap, simple, and pretty strong move here. Golding and Seeking literally only deal damage and nothing more, but I think Seeking is pretty decent though. And our final Mon here is also the final Evolution. Vaporeon has 80 HP, a weakness to lightning, and a 1 retreat cost. And of course, it has Quick Attack, exactly the same as Eevee, Flareon, and Jolteon. No reason to go over it. Its other move is Water Gun, which does 30 for 2 water and 1 colorless, and then 10 more for each additional water energy on Vaporeon, up to 2 more. So since I have nothing to compare here, let's rank the Evolutions instead, because I don't know, why not? I'm so spontaneous. Retreat Cost is all the same. They all have the exact same Quick Attack, so it comes down to their second move and HP. Vaporeon has the most HP with 80 instead of 70, but the lesser second move in my opinion. Under ideal circumstances, Vaporeon will be doing 50 damage for 5 energies, Jolteon will be dealing 80 for 3 energies, and Flareon 60 for 4, but Flareon needs one discarded, and Jolteon relies on coin flips. They're honestly all pretty balanced here for different reasons. But my ranking will be Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon. Pin Missile is the cheapest, with the potential for the most damage. Four Head Slips is pretty rare, but so is four Tail Slips, so Pin Missile is your safest bet here. And then Flamethrower does more damage than Water Gun for less, although you do discard. I think Flareon and Vaporeon are closer to each other, but Jolteon is the best in my eyes. So last time we had 26 Trainer Cards. Wow, that's a lot. What do we get this time? Pokeball. That's literally it. It's a common card where you flip a coin and if you get heads, you search your deck for any Pokemon to go into your hand. It's a solid addition to a deck as it gives you a chance at getting Pokemon you need at the moment and that's really it. Half the time it'll do nothing at all. And that does it for the short and sweet trainer section of this video. On to the stats. And yeah, this section was also more suited for the more type balanced base set than it is here, but I don't care. I'm still going to calculate some stuff anyway. 
Just because there's a ton of grass types doesn't mean it necessarily is the best type. Let's check out some facts. As far as HP averages go, we have a three-way tie for the most with 70. Colorless, Fire, and Lightning. There are a lot more colorless types here with 14 than the two Fire and three Lightning, so I feel like it's more impressive that the average is higher with colorless. Licky Tongue, Kangaskhan, Snorlax, Pidgeot, and Wigglytuff. I mean, these are all some hefty ones with 80 and 90 HP each. Rapidash and Flareon both have 70, so there's nothing to average there, and then Pikachu, Jolteon, and Electrode have 50, 70, and 90 respectively. So I say Colorless should win out here. Next highest is a tie between Grass and Water at 63.3, then Fighting with 61.6, and in last is Psychic with 40, because, well, Mr. Mime. On to weaknesses. The type that the most Pokemon here are weak to is, unsurprisingly, Fire, with 15 out of the 18 Grass types weak to it. But the second highest is pretty close. 13 Pokemon are weak to fighting here as 10 of the 14 colorless have a fighting weakness and all 3 of the lightning types do. In third is lightning with 7, then psychic with 6, grass with 4, water with 2, and then of course 0 for colorless. What is different here than in the base set is that every single jungle Pokemon does have a weakness. The base set had 5 without any so that kind of enhances their game value with even more cards added here. In regards to resistances, there really aren't many. Psychic is the type that gets resisted the most with 10 of the colorless ones having it, then fighting is resisted by 7, and lightning with 4. No Pokemon resists colorless, fire, grass, or water, just like before. So just by the jungle set alone, Mr. Mime would really struggle against most colorless types. For the fighting resistance, only Primeape, Marowak, Rhydon, and in the very rare case, Cubone, can bypass the resistance. Cubone would need to only have 10 HP remaining, and then Marowak would need 2 heads coin flips. For the lightning resistance, they all can still cause damage, but Jolteon needs at least 2 of the 4 coin flips, and then Pikachu and Electrode would only be dealing damage to bench ones with a resistance. But then let's look at retreat cost averages. There are a lot of Pokemon in this set without any retreat cost. But the best average is Fire, although again there are only 2. Flareon has 1, Rapidash has 0, so the average here is 0.5. Kinda skewed, but it's just how the results fared. The next best is Water at 0.67, and it's kinda the same thing here. Sea King and Vaporeon have 1, Golding has 0. Lightning and Psychic are tied for 3rd with a solid 1 average, because they all literally have a 1 retreat cost. But then it's Grass with an average of 1.17. That's really pretty good considering how many Grass Pokemon are here. Executor and Nidoqueen are the only ones with 3, and then you have Butterfree, Venomoth, and Scyther with 0 to bring the average down. The majority of them only have 1 though. Next is Colorless with a 1.36 average, and then Fighting in last with 1.5, mostly due to Rhyhorn and Rhydon. Alright, it's time to go off of my superior 100% objectively accurate point system here to see what the best type is in the jungle set. Let's find the best of each rarity for each type. For commons, we have Eevee, Rhyhorn, Nidoran Female, Pikachu, and Goldeen. I am going to give points to Rhyhorn, Nidoran Female, and Pikachu here. I think Rhyhorn is probably the best common in the set, personally. For uncommons, we have Dodrio, Marowak, Rapidash, Executor, and Sea King. Executor is easily the best, and then I'll go with points to Dodrio and Rapidash here. For the rares, we have Kangaskhan, Flareon, Scyther, Jolteon, Mr. Mime, and Vaporeon. Sorry Eeveelutions, but I'm going to give points to the other three. Scyther, Kangaskhan, and Mr. Mime are all pretty notorious here, and they all excel in very different ways. So after some algebraic equations, carrying the one, dividing by zero, I have my final result. The best type in the jungle set is... Fire? Wait, really? Yeah, something doesn't feel right about that but I checked all my calculations carefully. But yeah, I ended up giving the most points to fire, but come on, it really should be grass. Grass is the star of the set here. Colorless, grass, and lightning got the next highest points with fighting, psychic, and water as the worst. I think the reason fire got the edge here is because this set is loaded with grass, and that makes fire very valuable. There may only be Rapidash and Flareon here, but also like all of the fire types from the base set exist as well. It's a tough thing to consider here. I also think Colorless got a major improvement here over the base set for the most part, although some of that is because the jungle set completed three evolutions that started there. So I'm not going to pick one single type here. I think Fire, Grass, and Colorless all excel here. If you're doing a jungle set only match, Rapidash and Flareon are that much stronger here. 
Although, now that I think of it, if it's jungle only, you can't even use Rapidash. Ponyta is in the base set, so that just leaves Flareon. So, the winner here is Grass. It's Grass. It has to be Grass. Come on. And yes, there actually is a return to the store-bought theme decks. But instead of four plus a starter set, there are now only two. Power Reserve and Water Blast. These decks are laid out the same as the base set ones, except these now come with a sweet green vile plume coin instead of a chancy one. This was always my go-to when I used to play. I didn't own any of these jungle decks though, so I have no idea how I obtained one. Power Reserve is Psychic Grass based with Kangaskhan and Bellsprout on the cover, and the two rares being Kangaskhan and... Wait a minute, only one rare? Yeah, they kind of skimped out here. All of the base set ones had one hollow rare and one non-hollow, typically a rare trainer card, except for Beedrill and Overgrowth. But since Pokeball is the only trainer card in the jungle set, I guess they decided to only include one hollow rare here. But it is cool that you're guaranteed the hollow version in here instead of the non-hollow one, so there's that. The other strange thing is that they went with a psychic type for one of the jungle theme decks, the type with only one single Pokemon. So of course all of the psychic types here are base set ones, which is honestly kinda lame. But all of the grass types are from jungle. The psychic types here are Abra, Kadabra, and Jinx, and the grass ones are Oddish and Gloom, Bellsprout and Weepin' Bell, and Nidoran Female and Nidorina. The weaknesses here are mostly to Psychic, with the four grass being weak to fire and Kangaskhan weak to fighting. Honestly, it's a pretty good deck for what it is. It's also setting you up to eventually add a bunch of final forms like Alakazam, Vileplume, Victory Bell, and Nidoqueen if you want to customize it, so this is a pretty good starting point. Then it comes with a decent array of essential trainers. Switch, Potion, Gusties, Bill, and a Pokedex. I think this would be a pretty fun deck to use with a lot of potential. And the other deck is Water Blast, which is water and fighting based. Wait, there was a water fighting deck in the base set with Blackout. We're already running repeats here? Alright, I guess. Water Blast has Vaporeon and Meowth on the cover, with Vaporeon being the hollow rare here, of course. Vaporeon is the only jungle water type here, as they went with Poliwag, Poliwhirl, and Seal for the others. The fighting types here are Rhyhorn, Rhydon, and Machop, with a few colorless as well of Eevee, Meowth, and Persian. This deck is just okay, and I personally think Power Reserve is a bit better. But okay, let's just pretend that it's release day of the jungle set. You completed your base set, and you're ready to explore the first expansion. You go get the Water Blast deck because, oh, awesome, Vaporeon, and Meowth too. And then you open it, and there's four Poliwag, and two Poliwhirl, and two Machop, and a Seal. What? I already have all of these. Where are the other water types? I feel like they could have done a better job implementing more jungle types in these. It's kind of like in Gold and Silver, how almost all of the Johto gym leaders just use Kanto Pokemon. Yeah, we already did this. They could have easily exchanged Poliwag and Poliwhirl for Golding and Seeking, and then switch out Machop for Cubone or whatever. But now I'm just rewriting decks that came out 24 years ago, so what am I even doing? And yeah, that pretty much does it for going over the jungle set. As I said, I really have a soft spot for these cards. Back when I collected and went to get a pack somewhere, I would more often than not opt for the jungle packs over base or fossil. Those green packs were just too enticing for me, I loved them. As far as my favorite card in the set game-wise, it might be a surprise that I'm going to pick Venomoth. It's such a fun card to successfully pull off, and it's pretty good in general. Some honorable mentions are Clefable, Mr. Mime, Scyther, and Executor, which I still say is the best card in the set. For the artwork, I absolutely love the Flareon card here, both hollow and non-hollow. I also really like Mankey, and actually Seeking. Seeking isn't really a Pokemon I think about in general, but it's a cool looking card. Also, that computer generated looking Oddish. Oh, uh, and Parasect, of course. And now, the top 10 most valuable cards in the set. I did this in the base set video, and I think it was fun to find out where the money is. And like before, this is simply based on TCG Player ranked by market price. So this is just a generalized market price ranking for first editions as of August 2023. Number 10, Hollow Pinsir at about $62.99. Number 9, Hollow Nidoqueen at about $66.33. Number 8, Hollow Mr. Mime at about 68.28. Number 7, Hollow Kangaskhan at about 74.99. Number 6, Hollow Pidgeot at about 93.64. Number 5, Hollow Scyther at about 94.05. Number 4, Hollow Vaporeon at about 131.85. Number 3, Hollow Jolteon at about 133.79. 
Number two, Hollow Flareon at about 139.49. And then the number one most valuable jungle set card, Hollow Snorlax at about 199.99. A significant jump there. So Snorlax is the Charizard of the set. Kind of cool. I also love that all three evolutions are in the top four and that Flareon takes the top spot. Where are my Flareon people at? And then of course, the least valuable Pokemon in the set, just for funsies, a tie between Mankey and Paris at about 89 cents. Well then, that's kind of disappointing. And there we have it, the entire jungle set. Does it live up to the base set? Well, it's certainly less balanced, but it wasn't trying to be the same thing. This is the first real expansion meant to enhance the variety of your decks with a strong emphasis on grass types. And this does make sense, as of the original 151, there were a lot of grass and poison types there. I do think on average, most of the Pokemon are better than the base set ones, give or take some cards here and there. But this set just really holds a lot of nostalgic memories for me. I don't know if it was already out by the time I started collecting, but it was pretty close to that time. I recently started getting every card from the first three sets again, and I'm only missing four hollows from the jungle as of now. Flareon, Jolteon, Pidgeot, and Venomoth. But I'm in no hurry, I'll get them in due time. And I will end this video with a quick story. I was in 8th grade when I was collecting these and I kinda made a friend in school who also collected Pokemon cards. We agreed to bring some of our doubles into school one day to do some trading and I will never forget that one of these cards was a Spearow from the jungle set. One I had never even seen before. I did have some jungle cards but this was my first time ever seeing one of these common Spearows. So he promptly traded it to me. That same day after school, I went to my friend James's house for some extreme video gaming or whatever nonsense we did, and I had brought my Pokemon cards. As we were in the next room, we hear his younger brother exclaim, Uh-oh! from the next room. Apparently their dog had decided to turn one single Pokemon card into a chew toy, and by some stroke of luck, my Spearow was the one that he chose. It was in tatters and unable to be restored. I mean, better than that than a hollow Jolteon or something, but still. What luck to have my brand new Spearow card not even last a few hours in my possession. So basically, take care of your cards, because you never know which ones may look like snackies to an unsuspecting friend. As always, if you totally, absolutely love the Paris Spectre channel and want to know how you can go beyond what's expected of you, visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash paraspectre and get some nifty looking Paraspectre stickers, a stamped Parasect card, and your very own assigned virtual card, as shown by these super awesome people. Also, if you need some sweet new stylish shirts, intotheam.com slash paraspectre helps all of us out because it gets you 10% off of your order. And my own personal bonfire page exists too. And also, 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 as always, if none of that sounds like anything you want to be a part of, your viewership and subby is certainly appreciated. Thank you for whatever you choose to do. Next up, the fossil set. Paraspector will return.